Kirchhoff's rules are essentially a set of two rules that we use to analyze complex circuit problems. So these two rules stem from the conservation of electric charge and the conservation of energy. And let's begin with Kirchhoff's first rule, also known as the junction rule. So at any given junction or intersection within an electric circuit, the quantity of electric charge that flows into that particular junction is equal to the quantity of electric charge that comes out of that same junction. And that stems from the fact that electric charge is not consumed or destroyed within that junction. So once again, at any junction or intersection within an electric circuit, the current that flows into that junction is equal to the electric current that flows out of that junction. So let's suppose we have the following junction or intersection within our electric circuit. So by Kirchhoff's first rule, also known as the junction rule, the quantity of electric current given by I1 that flows into that that junction is equal to the sum of the electric current that flows out. So I2 plus I3. Now, once again, this rule, the junction rule, is essentially a byproduct of the conservation of electric charge. Now, let's move on to Kirchhoff's second rule. Kirchhoff's second rule essentially states that the sum of all the change in potential or voltage around any closed loop within an electric circuit is always equal to zero. And this rule, also known as the loop rule, essentially stems from the conservation of energy. Energy, just like electric charge, is not destroyed nor is it created. It is always conserved. So to apply and examine how this rule works, let's look at the following electric circuit. Let's suppose we have two resistors given by 5 ohms and 10 ohms. And we also have a battery that has a voltage difference of 12 volts. So let's suppose we want to examine uh, the change in voltage that a positive electric charge experiences as it goes from an initial position at any location on our electric circuit around and back to that same initial position. So let's suppose we begin at this location and loop around to this initial location. So let's suppose we're examining the flow of positive charge. So positive charge begins at this initial position and we assume the voltage of the positive charge at this position is zero. So positive charge begins at the starting position with no voltage and travels through the battery to position A. So as the positive charge flows from this location to this location, it undergoes a change in voltage, a positive change in voltage as a result of this battery. In other words, it gains 12 volts of voltage. Now, what happens when our positive charge flows from location A to location B? So as it travels to point B from point A, it does not lose any voltage because we assume the resistance in the wire is negligible. Now, what happens when the positive charge flows from position B to position C? So, as the positive electric charge flows from B to C, it passes a resistance of 5 ohms. And that means it loses a voltage of V is equal to I multiplied by R, which is Ohm law. So that means because R for this particular case is 5, it loses 5 multiplied by R voltage. Now finally, as the positive charge flows from location C to location D, it once again changes in potential difference. So in other words, because there's a resistance, it once again loses voltage. And finally, when it travels from D to the final position, to this initial position, the change in potential difference around the entire loop should give us zero according 
according to Kirchhoff's second rule. So let's see exactly what this means by first calculating what our current is through our electric circuit. So by our equation, we know that the current is equal to our 12 volts divided by the total resistance 5 plus 10 ohms because these two resistors are in series. So we have 12 divided by 15 gives us 0 0.8 amps is our electric current through our electric circuit. Now we apply the loop rule also known as Kirchhoff's second rule. So we begin essentially at this position and then we gain 12 volts of electric potential difference. So 12 volts. Now we subtract the change in potential that our positive electric charge experiences as it travels from B to C and from C to D. So from B to C we have 5 ohms multiplied by 0.8 amps and from C to D we have 10 ohms multiplied by 0.8 amps. If we sum all these values we get a zero value and that's exactly what Kirchhoff's second rule tells us. The sum of all the change in potential voltage around any closed loop within an electric circuit is always equal to zero. Now notice we assume that the resistance of our wire is negligible. So that means when our current flows from A to B or from D to the final position, there is no change in voltage. So, in the next lecture, we're essentially going to use these two rules to solve complex circuit problems. So, there are five steps that we should always follow when applying Kirchhoff's rules. Step number one, label the electric current through each section of our circuit. So step number two, determine how many unknowns we are dealing with so that we know how many equations we need. Uh, step number three, apply Kirchhoff's first rule and step number uh, four, apply Kirchhoff's second rule. So now we have our sets of equations, we can use them to solve for our unknowns, as we'll see in the next lecture.